Hello everyone and welcome to the review of 2000 Classic EastEnders. We're in the millennium. We yeah. can no longer party like 1999. The no, the future is today. <laughs> Wasn't many um, references this year on the millennium bug, was there? Mm. I expected more. Well, because it was uh, something of nothing thing in the news, yeah, wasn't it? Back then, that was like literally all I remember from that year. From yeah, childhood. leading up to it. Leading up to it. I remember That's last true. year in EastEnders there was a reference, wasn't there? Oh, Ian, yeah, they mentioned on yeah, the computer. Yeah, the computer. Mm. And he was like, ooh, I'm Lenny Bug ready. But, but we survived. We did. All there was survived. Sky didn't fall in, although 2022, <laughs> the current year we're filming this, it feels like the world <laughs> may have collapsed. They, um, they survived a World War II bomb threat as well, didn't they? In February for the anniversary, was it 15 years? The 15 years anniversary, 15 wasn't years. it? by that point so yes they had a big episode in the Vic they did it was a nice episode too because they kind of everything was filmed it was almost like filmed like one shot mm. so it, it seemed to continue like it, it's, it's like the half an hour episode was filmed in half an hour type of situation mm. there was no outside exterior it was all done on that one set which I appreciated yeah did enjoy that there was a little red clock Reg Clocks. Reg, Reg Cox. Cox mentioned at the end with mm -hmm. Pauline and Dot. So that was fun. Well, I've noticed this year, 2000, mm. that this is the first time where they kind of started to reference their history a lot more as well. Mm. And there was a lot more references to, especially with the Bills um, and the Fowlers, Pauline would reference a lot of things about her mum, about Pete, about, mm. you know... Michelle. Michelle. Part of the history now, isn't she? Mm -hmm. And even the Mitchells referenced, like, back when they first were introduced mm. as well. And so it, this was the first time I felt like I was watching a year of EastEnders where... They reminisce. They, they had enough back history to. They, yes, get they had the enough. Lines. They had enough canon now that they were able to do it without, and and they could refer refer to it something that you already knew ha that had happened because Dot did it as well. I think with Nick, mm -hmm. kind of reference with him, Nick, Nick's kind of friend friendship rivalry with um, Mark, mm -hmm. and that was referenced this year as well. We should also say that two thousand was the handover year, the changeover year of an EP. It was. It was one of those. We get them every sort of what. Two three to three years-ish, where there's that sort of... And before, in Classic EastEnders, you didn't really notice, like, a new producer comes on and no. you wouldn't know unless you were told. And then last year, 1999, we had Matthew Robinson, who kind of, um, he completely changed the sh his way of doing it, didn't he? He was the axe man. Mm -hmm. And then I think from there, from now onwards, we're like, you're, a new producer's like, oh, I need to make my own stamp now. I think he set, like, a precedent of... um extreme soapiness which has slowly bulldozed more every, every yeah, producer seeps, I think yeah seeped more and more in like, mm. but then I think that was the landscape of television I mean 2000 is an era that's kind of fondly from 2000 now to about 2012 I think is an era where EastEnders is quite fondly remembered and mm. I feel this is a new era I said that to you before I said the classic era was for me 1985 to 92 92 to 2000 was the Mitchell era yeah the Mitchell brothers and now yeah. it feels like this is the kind of the postmodern era, mm. as it were. This is what it feels like. like the now. Slaters and the mm. yeah, and all that. So um, yeah. So it's an interesting thing because obviously um, there's a big lots of changes this year. So there was nice. normally when there's a producer handover, there's a bit of a lull, which there was this year. Whoa. I feel there was a bit of a lull in the middle, but it did sort of ramp up again. But yeah, well, the producer from last year, I think, has has opened it up to be. With the Saskia murder, was like it opens that was good. It, it opens it up like soap can be extreme, and but, now like yeah. I think if, even though that was like the peak of EastEnders, I feel that allowed other people to do whatever they wanted, and yeah. each producer has gone <laughs> more extreme. Well, because with the Matthew Rose, how it, how it ended with Matthew Rose mm. and Steve. And um, my favourite, yes, <laughs> yeah, that that kind of that was not how you, EastEnders wouldn't have ended a story like that in mm, that before, manner. Before, but yeah, before. it kind of because of the Saskia thing, it kind of let them do that. Yeah. and then more and more stuff has gone. When they saw that that kind of it it worked, and an audience accepted mm. it in that kind. But of... But then they have to always top it. And it's like bulldozed every year, which now goes to like... Which is what we're in that era now, mm. isn't it? Like we, 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 like in modern day now, as we record this, like that's we, it's kind of the whole of landscape of soap is that it, everything always has to be mm. better than the last. It's like Nick Cotton is seen as a horrible rolling because he's a murderer. Mm. Everyone in the Vic's like, oh, he's a murderer? Nowadays? You'll be, you'll be, you'll be, ha you'll be happy to find someone who's not a murderer. <laughs> um, right, so as we always do on the review of the year, we say... We go through the characters we say goodbye to forever. Yeah. Pretty much. This one had a lot of final appearances um, of lots of characters. Mm. So I'm just going to run through them 
fairly quickly. I mean, one of them, one had an appearance, Nelly. Aunt Nelly. Aunt Nelly came and went again. Yeah, she had her one scene at a funeral, which she always does. It's such a shame because I remember such lovely scenes with her and Arthur. Mm, I grew to quite like Nelly. Yeah, I did in the end. And um, obviously the actress was quite willing, so mm. seems a bit sad, but yeah, that was after. We saw the last of Matthew Rose, which you mentioned just now. Yes, which. Where he came back to get his revenge on Steve. He did. He set up Steve. Um, I mean, do you want to talk about it? Yeah. So we, we, we see set up Steve into thinking he was slowly going mad mm-hmm. by like going into his flat and like Removing rearranging things. Upsetting things. Jackie. He upset Jackie. And you don't upset Jackie. I blew in love Jackie. I mean, we lost Jackie this year as well. We did. Which was final heartbroken. Appearance. Heartbroken. Mm. And uh, it kind of convolvated into this big standoff at the E20. Yes, where he threatened to kill him. Yes. And he like made a VHS tape that he sent Steve where he was blowing up light bulbs. And That's things. right. Like, that's right. He'd be like, I'm going to do this to you. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it was at the flat, and he was like, when your sister turns on the light bulb, it might blow up in her face. Yeah, this little poof. <laughs> and that's where we were like, mm, this is very awful. <laughs> that was quite tame compared to how it then led, because then mm. he he then, uh, it was that kind of like that fight, and then he yeah. kind of put petrol around chair. the club. Yeah. Like that he's... music video of, um, what's that woman where she's tied to a chair, and it's like, it's a, this famous song. Don't know. What is it? Are you sure it's a music video yeah. or a dream? <laughs> <laughs> Stuck in the middle with you. That song. But that's Reservoir Dogs. Yeah but, yeah, but there's a music video who covered that song. Louise. Yeah. Louise and from she, She's like tied onto a chair. And that's so what it looked like. How references that? That's what it looked like with Steve. Well, so she was referencing Reservoir Dogs. So do or EastEnders. Wait, do you, when was Reservoir Dogs <laughs> released? I think it was the 90s. So I think EastEnders stole it from yeah, Louise stole it from Steve Owen. <laughs> Matthew did. Rose. She did. Anyway, it Louise would be good in EastEnders. Louise Redknapp. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't she? Yeah, she could she be need... Rose's, Rose's sister. She's broken up with um, her husband, I think. So. <laughs> anyway, that's not about plastic, <laughs> yeah. does it? Um, but yeah, though, he was like throwing fake petrol on him, and it all turned out that it was all make believe he wanted to but scare Steve. And I said to you, I said, petrol has a hell of a stink to it, so surely Steve would have realised. But then, I suppose, because of the he panic, because of the fear. So yeah, well, we were there about to be like, well, this is ridiculous, but it turns out that it was all just to make him scared. Yeah. He wasn't actually going to murder Would Steve. someone that age really so. be pushed that far? And then mm. they could, and this is what I mean, they kind of then reeled in the realism a little bit because then you saw that Steve and it was a plan it was a plot he knew what he was doing and it wasn't he had no intention of killing Steve he just wanted Steve to feel how he felt how he felt and it sent Steve on a, like a drug binge it did. where he got addicted to like painkillers and all sorts of other stuff mm. and then Billy Mitchell was, well it introduced Billy Mitchell yeah, into being his drug being, dealer wasn't yeah, he he became then a main character at this point Billy and then Mitchell. Jackie put him in a ta- taxi and drove him to a rehab centre they and went and together that. Mm. Jackie went with him yeah. Jackie's still at the rehab centre <laughs> Because of her anger issues. <laughs> so, um, Giovanni, yeah. the DeMarco. Yeah, the, I was going to we're going on to their exit because all of them exit. We said goodbye to Rosa, Gianni, Teresa, and Nikki, but not Beppe. But the worst one. Mm. The one that should have gone. Yeah, and he's had a really rubbish year since, <sighs> really. I need a job. <laughs> I need to work drive a taxi. So, um, his yeah. stupid beard. I don't know if I mentioned this last time. Then no, we did the review of 1999, mm. but his beard really irritates me because that bottom bit under his chin is slightly off centre it must be really annoying that bit to keep it like it in trim all the time like literally every two well, days I don't know why he has it he looks good it's like his character it's like stuff. Pat's earrings isn't it it's Beppe's <laughs> Beppe's beard yeah it's the same sort of thing or like Sharon's shoulder pads Sharon's legs I or think eyelashes or yeah. Sharon's shoes Sharon's trainers um, Sharon's everything yeah we said goodbye to the DeMarco sadly because obviously that was when John York was stepping in and he was mm. sort of making his mark and he needed to fill a big family of his own the Slaters so. he did but it seems such a shame because like everyone I remember watching EastEnders and a lot of people slagged off the DeMarco mm. and said they were They're an not, awful family they weren't remembered very well at all were they compared to the stuff we see mm. like it, they, they were great they were good I mm. liked this. I think what it shows is just how good everyone else was. Mm. That there was that they were seen as like the boring rubbish ones, mm. whereas actually the, they were quite good at, at this year. I found, um, but yeah, it was all down to Nikki why they left in the end. I think wasn't it, and her her weird lies. Oh, yeah, was she, it a lie? I can't really remember. It was well, so confusing. It was a bit again. She was having teaching lessons, wasn't she? Private lessons. But she fancied him. Teacher. Yeah, and then the, 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 we've discovered that he did kiss her. 
Yes. But, she, but then she but, got scared, and then because she was embarrassed, she said that he tried to attack he, her. No, she, no that he, he went further. Mm. He, he then tried to... Yeah, and touch her or whatever. Yeah, touch her up and initiate sex, mm. which that didn't happen. No, but so, Gianni thought it didn't. He punched him, and then there was yeah. like another lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, because then so he went all... to sue Giovanni, mm. but then they agreed that Nikki and the teacher... I forget the teacher's name, that's a shame. Um, Nikki and the teacher agreed that he, if they kind of stopped the his lawsuit and her lawsuit yeah, then they'll sort of just part forget ways. about it um, but that was that was weird because it was like it, it was like there was blame there was no there was no clear cut which is good I suppose but there was no clear cut blame to be pointed to of no. course Nikki should never have been she was underage he should never have kissed her anything like that but at the same time she should never have lied to the police mm. um and so there was no kind of it felt it felt there like there was no sort of end. There was no end. It, really. to it, they yeah. just, the, Rose was like, "Well, we've embarrassed ourselves. Everyone keeps looking at us." <laughs> Oscar hates us. <laughs> My uncle, who we never heard of, owns a restaurant, and they've given us a job. In Manchester, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And Therese was like, "Well, I'll just stay here because I've got a job. So I'm not really fussed Makes about sense. living with you." And then she was like, "Actually, no, I'm going to go." Yeah. And it's like, well, they could have kept Teresa. I feel with Pepe because Pepe is so isolated without everyone that he's just. He's just got Sandra, who's... Well, he had that story with Sandra, and then Sandra cheated on him with... Um, Jack. Jack, the policeman. Not Jack Branning. But not Jack <laughs> Branning. Um, and, and, and we now know that Bethe's also friends with Max, a man named Max. Mm. So I feel like this was this was implementing the plan. Mm. And um, But yeah, and he... And Jack, not Jack Branning, the police officer who slept with... Sa- was with Sandra when Sandra left Bethe the first time. Mm-hmm. Then he kind of coaxed her, really, let's be honest. There was no, there was a lot of persuasion. She was kind of adamant that, no, I want to stay with Beppe. I mean, the Sandra Joe. story was another casualty of a producer swap over. Yeah, Because she came back at the beginning of the year during, was it Rose's birthday? She interrupted the party, yes, didn't she? Yes, um, Where she wanted to come back with Beppe, see her son, start again. And they were quite happy. And then obviously John York came in and he was like, oh no, you've had an affair with this guy and actually you couldn't have children was it something like she couldn't have yeah, children she, she have found children. chicken and she that's Joe. why that's why she came back to get Joe and then she didn't actually love Bebe mm. the whole time so. I mean I feel disappointed if Joe is my only child <laughs> to be honest with you like every time he's on screen mm. I have no idea he what he's saying he falls into carpets a lot he? <laughs> he just falls over all the time <laughs> who's that character in 88 he fell into the um, bin bags Trevor. Trevor. He's the new Trevor. <laughs> I say that they bring back Joe and make him the new Trevor and he mm. can start flirting with 15-year-old um, girls. But, um, yeah, no, he, Joe's a weirdo. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. He just confuses me. Like, he fell down a pit in a garage. Like, who falls down a pit in a garage? <laughs> it's not like the hole isn't, like, big enough to not just... And he, well, he knew the hole was there. He he's just been there very the... protected by his Nana Rosa, so <sighs> he's not got much life skills. He did a photo- photography project. I mean, you can do that. Yeah, didn't someone do it for him? Didn't oh, Rosa right. do it for him? Yeah, didn't Laura she? did it for him. Well, no, Laura did the colour photographs, hmm. which because that was better than Rose's black and white photographs. And Rose- Sandra, you mean, not Laura? Sorry, Sandra. Yeah, yes. we get to Laura, but um, yeah. Um, so who else did we say goodbye to? A really big one we said goodbye to was Irene. I, yes, that was a big hit for me. Where um, at the beginning of this year was a really good set of episodes. Right, the, like the first few episodes was when the aftermath of the Troy affair was happening, mm-hmm. and we saw Terry and Irene sort of talk it through and kind of accept, but not accept, and well, sort was, of just stay together. But... It was so well done because mm-hmm. he watched Casablanca together. They had a meal, and he kind of gave Irene the opportunity to admit. He, he kind of said, "I know what you mm-hmm. did." Admit to me. I don't even want sorry. I don't even want you to apologise to me. Just admit what you did. And Irene kind of did. And so they kind of then decided. Mm-hmm. But then Irene realised... And they had was... new ventures with them first till last and stuff. And But then um, the as year, it yeah. drove into the first to last. <laughs> so then that lost the, them the, their shop. Mm-hmm. The one thing that was kind of kept they them together. They got a payout for it. They did. But that was the one thing that kept them together. And mm. um, uh, Terry wanted to use the money for a uh, strip night. <laughs> Yeah, with Jim. Uh, and Irene wanted to use the money for like some kind of zen... Uh, yeah, to do some training, tra- massage therapy and stuff. And um, she was sort of at a crossroad in her life, wasn't she? Where she didn't really... I think she knew she didn't want what she had. Mm. But she, at the same time, she didn't know how to sort of get out. And then there was the big Spanish holiday I with Pat and Frank and Roy, so Peggy. Um, where that was the last we saw of Irene. Mm. She uh, went on... She was kind of on her own journey on that, those three Literally or four episodes, wasn't she? 
Mm. Yeah, she saw a successful blonde woman in a jeep. She did. She thought that could be me. That could be me. But then when she took took the took the deal from Terry to take the jeep and the money, mm. she then drove into town and saw that blonde woman with children. Yes. She realised. Oh, was getting God. stressed out and doing shopping. She was again another regular person. I made and, a mistake. Um, yeah, but it was interesting because she came across a woman, an English couple who'd moved out to Spain and opened a shop yeah, similar to the first and last. That. That was funny. And um, she kind of saw her life before her eyes didn't mm. she and um terry sort of terry said well here's the jeep here's the money if you love me you can stay and she was like i'm gonna go yeah well, so, she- yeah it's a shame she's such a good character irene like from right to the beginning to the end so it was a really good arc for her but it is sad to see her go. they're a good couple mm. a real couple mm. and like as we said at the top of this review like there was a lot of kind of not like i don't want to say jump the shark but kind of at the time, out of their moments for EastEnders, like at the time, yeah, they were like just on the cusp of being a bit um, mm. silly, yeah. Mm. And and Terry and Irene almost grounded EastEnders. That, that was old school EastEnders. The way that was written, the way that was mm. that was planned out and planned. Yeah, they were like a couple with massive flaws, but mm. at the same time, you kind of liked them mm. together in like a weird toxic way. I love them, <laughs> I and if they ever, if, if you know, if, if if they ever bring them back, I think they could easily slot back into the show mm-hmm. as an older couple. Because so Terry many... can replace Frank for, I, for Janine's father replacement. Which he, that's what he's done, isn't it? But he's mm. At the moment, because she's dressing Wait, up. Talk about that. That's too oh, one. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited. Gosh. So, right, some other more exits. We've got to skip through some of these because they're boring. So Nina left. She didn't really do much. She skipped she? everyone else, but you kept Nina in. <laughs> well, no, Nina, no, she's one I'm skipping through. Oh, yeah, she yeah, just yeah. left. She didn't really do she much. She left in a taxi, she, gave yeah. Mick a kiss, and then mm. she, she was like, went missing for like four months and mm. then appeared for half an episode and said my dad's ill and then oh, disappeared yeah. and I was like okay mm. so that was that she got a qualification at least um, Dr. Fred Fonseca I, left I thought that was a sad ending to be honest with you because again it left Mick with no one everyone left Mick this, <laughs> this year his mum left as well Mick's yeah mom. Josie she's gone mm-hmm. she her visa ran out and then her daughter was like well I'm just going to stay with my brother Kim so mm. Kim and Mick stayed and how she works for him <laughs> Um, who else we, we lost Frank this was Mike Reed's last full time yes. stint really yes so that a was a real big year for him from the show a huge hole and again mm. that's, that was kind of spawned from the holiday in Spain in yes, Spain big affair are we going to talk about that more in detail later no, we can go through it now because we're on it well, but, um, I will yeah. because that's where Pat and Frank basically rekindle their love together mm-hmm. and their holiday in Spain um, and this again it's it's heartbreaking because the pain in again you can't take one side here no with Roy Peggy Frank and Pat each and every single one of them yeah it's so complicated as well because Frank Mm. was Frank felt guilty for the way he was feeling because all the stuff that Peggy had been through with her cancer recently mm-hmm. in her reconstruction and then Roy was always jealous but he'd finally let Frank in and now <laughs> they've done this and Pat she, she kind of settled because she knew Roy was like the safe option didn't she and then, but then obviously Frank was like this sort of spark that um, caused her to, well, she bought a bag of all sorts, didn't she? When she, was she did a sex shop bag, I mean, I'd love to delve into yeah, that. I don't know what else was in there. I'd love to see that scene. <laughs> there was some massage oil and some underwear we saw, but it we didn't see the rest. No, that bag still has some stuff remaining in it. And she hid it, didn't she, in the suitcase and so Barry found beans. it. Oh, Who are they being used on, Pat or Frank? Maybe or they're both? sharing them. <laughs> <laughs> oh god there's not the double ended deal fluffy going. handcuffs there's all sorts <laughs> oh, going on I don't want to think about it but, um, yeah, but they... Peggy my heart felt for Peggy the most mm. because Peggy was being hurt here and she kind of knew it was happening but couldn't admit it yeah. until she finally got that letter that Frank had left her to say that he was leaving mm. and then there's that and mad that scramble big, yeah because he was trying to get rid of because they were going to leave together Pat and Frank weren't they leave letters she didn't tell Roy and then he'd left his letter and then it had gone missing and he thought Phil was playing tricks and he spent all his time focusing on Phil yeah. and um, little Mo had it didn't she and, she she, and then pocket. Peggy put it behind the bar and then Pat saw it and then Pat was like I'm going to help behind the bar mm-hmm. but no one could grab it in time um, and then the fireworks Firework yeah night. hope you enjoyed the fireworks mm. good night an iconic moment on EastEnders um, there's a lot of moments like that in 2000 but you, you remember it being iconic moments and you think oh these all happened in 2000 mm, the bow tie with him naked mm-hmm. trying mm-hmm. to seduce yes. Pat once more <laughs> 
<laughs> um, it all went on. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a shame to see Frank go because he's such a good character. But I think Mike Reed at the time wanted the rest, didn't he? he kind yeah, of come back. He was on a he went on a break during the year, and that's yeah. when Ricky left. And yeah. it's a shame because they had to rewrite last minute. That Phil had to be the one. Phil who, had to be Frank. Yeah, Phil had to be Where, Frank for, for the whole year. Phil had been really horrible to Ricky. Yeah, and then because they had to rewrite it, Phil was the one who was there mm. trying to persuade him to come back. Again, um, say what you will about um, uh, Ricky, the character of Ricky, but my God, that was a real... When Bianca left and he was just broken, mm. that moment at the service station on the bridge with Phil and Ricky, when F- Ricky was literally just screaming and tearing mm. Phil Both apart. the actors were really... You could tell yes. they were tired <laughs> because like, their voices <laughs> yeah. were gone. Mm. They, were they really helped going. with the scene. Mm. Ricky was basically... Ricky was angry and tortured and upset and he basically took it all out on Phil. And because Phil has this kind of friendship with Ricky, he allowed him. Mm. He's a bit like... Um, with Grant, who was um, Nigel. Nigel, yeah. He was the same kind of relationship that anyone else, Phil would not allow that. Lisa especially, <laughs> as we'll come to. Uh, but, but with Ricky... <laughs> It was allowed because he they they've had this this history to, mm. between them, and again it was it, it so it worked with Phil being the one. Yeah, who saw it's just a go. shame because I think it would have been really good if with it was Mike, Mike Reed. Reed. Yeah. It would have been really good, but um, yeah, it's a shame he wasn't there. Mm. But yeah, that was Ricky's Ricky's little exit. And the reason why Ricky thing. left was because Dan Sullivan. Mm. He left this yes, week. He had a big thing. When he you, came back he? and left again, yes. didn't he? And that weird promo shot. We found a promo shot online. Well, he comes back again in two thousand one. Oh, so do you think, think that's, that's the promo for. shot? Then I shall shut yeah. up and talk about it this for the next week. Yeah, it was the whole selling the Vic for five pounds, yeah. and then Frank and Peggy were trying to get it back the whole year, and then yeah. Phil, being even though he's the one who caused all this issue, being the one who sorted it out over a poker game, was something stupid. Oh, that's right, that's right, that poker yes. game. Although, again, this is the thing. <laughs> Phil is a bit of a douche. <laughs> There's no denying it in this year. Especially era. this year. <laughs> yeah, especially in 2001, which we obviously we're now starting to watch, but we won't talk about that until the mm. next year's review. But... It, it, up until this in 2000 it was okay because like everything again it was a bit just was, yeah. on the cusp of being basically silly. when Grant left it kind of Phil got ruined I feel well, he had to take their nose with both mm. roles didn't he he had to be Phil and Grant at mm. this point and then that's what kind of ruined Phil and this was the moment it happened really this was moment this was Phil's kind of transition from being the slightly gentler Mitchell to being the more mm. angry bitter Acidic <laughs> Mitchell. Yeah. It was odd that they kept Dan on for so long after the Carol and Bianca thing. Mm. He like had this thing with Mel, didn't he, where he like followed her to a hotel and demanded to sleep with her, and and then the next minute she didn't like Dan and she liked Steve, and then two minutes later she didn't like Steve, and it's like, what is Mel? Mel was very Mel's easily led. Yeah. That was another she? story which wasn't quite written very well. Where mm. Phil at Christmas like suddenly loved her yeah. <laughs> and wanted to sleep with her and it's like <laughs> what it was like Grant and when Kathy was leaving and Grant suddenly announced his love yeah. for Kathy out of nowhere so um yeah the whole male Steve Phil thing's not been I don't feel it's been paced too well I don't know I guess it doesn't help because we're watching it in bulk maybe maybe but like it's just really weird how Steve appeared back from his drug binge and he was now Steve Owen again and he was like I've booked a wedding for us yeah. and he was like what and Mel was like I don't want to marry you and then a month later she was like I do want to marry you and I love mm. everything about you and he's you. like well I don't want to marry you yeah and then he didn't want to marry her <laughs> yeah it was like, weird it was just stupid unfortunately like they're remembered as like this big power couple but mm. at the moment I'm like no but no. Mel I, I remember Mel being different to how I'm now seeing Mel do you know what I mean? It's like mm. when Mel returned. She's when, quite caring in the current one. Like she, she's like a bit naive Ian. though. She's really naive. Yeah, especially with men. Yeah, but yeah, with Ian. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Well, she mm. gave Ian the loan, didn't she? But yes. again, is that? Yeah. I think that's two thousand. No, that's this year his oh, bankruptcy storyline where he. Um, that was a good story. He hired Sandra to be his like PA. He hired Laura. <laughs> the to be, worst PA in history. <laughs> he hired Laura and Super Nanny, Mary Poppins to be like mm. the house. Keeper and all sorts. Laura's still irritating this year. Watching, uh, let's be honest. She was really annoying. Um, and he only like slept with her when he was drunk. It was really <laughs> weird. Same. <laughs> um, but yeah, Laura was just annoying. But Pat seems to really like her. Well, Pat was championing mm, Laura from the beginning Laura. to get together with Ian, but Ian couldn't see it. Mm. But then when Ian was at his absolute lowest, all of a sudden he saw it. But to be fair to Laura, she has been the most considerate mm. toward Ian this whole journey that he's been on because yeah he, he basically he yeah. ploughed himself into bankruptcy because that was pretty much Ian's whole story the whole year they were, they planned that quite well really mm. where he, he borrowed money from Pauline to invest in these houses and they didn't get just built overnight like it was placed out really well but um, yeah twin, no, he had what was it half an hour to get the money 
He did, and, and there again, was one episode. Was, again, it was another episode that was filmed in real time. Mm. There was a, a real thing about that at the time. And I again, think. it was Phil who ended up um, messing everything up, didn't he? He didn't give the money, so where well, he'd like to see Ian squirm. Didn't yes, he? Um, and then, then again, this feels like this is the true beginning. I mean, there's been hints of it up until this point where Ian had his head flushed out of the toilet and him being quite gloating about mm. Kathy leaving Phil. But this is the first true moment where we're actually seeing Phil and Ian's now rivalry. And I said to you, actually, I said that that whole scene when Lucy died and you see them on the couch and Ian said, I have nothing left to Phil. Mm, they hug each other. And they hug each other. So nice. It, it feels like that, that, that means a lot more now mm. I've rewatched this the, the genesis of the Phil and Ian's relationship now becoming what it's become because obviously it gets it gets lots more worse as it time goes mm. on but so it's nice to see those scenes again to kind of reflect back on the Lucy's death scene mm. so yeah that was good um, one big exit we had which was John York came in swinging with his love his love on show for EastEnders because he brought back Ethel that's and right. Dr. Leg oh <laughs> John York brought back to Dr. Leg twice, you could yeah. argue. He brought him back again to kill exactly. him. <laughs> so you, you, this, you, the thing I can tell is that you can tell that John York has a real love for the show because he's mm. brought back Ethel, he brought back Dr. Leg. Well, he didn't really have to. Um, later on, he brings back Sharon. So he's obviously got this love for like the original mm. sort of thing. Um, Which is what has. an EP should have, in my opinion. Mm. You, shouldn't, you should bring back a, a character and know what to do with them. Mm. And John York seemed to, to know yeah, to what to do with Yeah, he had a clear plan. Them. But yeah. yes, Ethel, it was very sad. She was back for quite Lovely a bit, about two months, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, living in Pauline's house with Dot caring for her. And yeah, she um, wanted Dot to help her die. Yes, she did. Um, again, Dot, Dot is a cat. Dot is my f character of the year for 2000 and slowly seeping into 2001 at the moment. She is just such a <laughs> layered character. <laughs> I just love her so much. There's mm. so much to her. Yeah, she's, the, she's constantly fighting um, mm. inside her head, isn't she, of what... Mm -hmm. she's doing her spirituality won't allow her to do this with Ethel but her friendship and her bond with Ethel outweighed it in the mm -hmm. end but then when Ethel died and, she, and and Dot had a hand at it although a very minor hand she then wanted to be punished she felt like she needed to be punished and so then she started going on a rampage and that poor chemist <laughs> no she wanted to be punished and arrested for it didn't she yeah and um, she told Pauline and Pauline didn't really accept no, Pauline yeah. said I would never accept no, that. because she, she could have died. She could have lasted another month. She would have died the next day, Pauline said. Yeah, so but I got fair. it. I got it. Mm. I, I, I but was it was interesting that they the had side. that that side of it, even though it made Pauline look a bit, you know, cold. cold I don't think it made... No, I don't I disagree. I don't think it made Pauline look cold. I think it made Pauline look almost as, as, as an outsider looking in, kind mm. of judge, a bit judgy, yes, but kind of understandably so. Mm. And, and and the way that Dot kind of took the burden on her shoulders, but didn't argue, this is classic Dot. Dot will fight tooth and nail with something she believes in. But what she did with Ethel, she didn't believe in it. So she agreed with Pauline and so just kind of accepted it. And as I say, then started knocking down shelves at the poor chemist. She did. And she, went, she did go to prison though in the end. She did for, for a, a week or two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah, yeah, she did. But and we saw a... scenes in prison again. <laughs> Unheard of today. <laughs> She's been bullied in her thing. She's she a silly little top bunk. They stole her little frame with, that the gym gave her, which um, had like, hallelujah, every time you pressed a button on it. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, very sad to see Ethel go, but like it's just some really... Great scenes between them. Perfect scenes. So good. There's not one scene where Ethel did. We've seen every scene of hers now. I love her. Every single scene of hers, of Gretchen, she, mm -hmm. she did it. She was a star. Mm. Absolutely loved Ethel. And again, <laughs> it, again, it, as I said, it kind of felt like a new era. Ethel's death kind of felt like... Yeah, because her was... funeral landed on the same day that Slater's arrived. Yeah. So it was like a little handover. That's how it felt. So if we go on to the new characters and the returnees, obviously we've done Sandra, we've done Laura. Um... <laughs> Coming out of Ethel's funeral, we had Eddie and Kerry Skinner. <laughs> I mean, Eddie's fine. Yeah, Eddie is basically doesn't... Jeff, because Jeff yes. left, sadly. I liked Jeff, Mel's dad. Mm, he was really good. Yeah. And he left, and then they've just created Eddie, but he's doing the same thing as Jeff. He's Practical. decorating the house and... Like a are they aren't they with Pauline sort of weird thing. Uh, I it's think like they, the same character basically. I think they put they they painted themselves into a corner in a way with Jeff, and they, they didn't know what they could do next with him. Mm. The Pauline thing. 
And so then they had to bring some, because Jeff was such a good character, really. So I think that's what they kind of mm. did. But I don't think they needed to bring Kerry with him. No, <laughs> Kerry's that's a, a bloody pain. Yeah, she's, she's not the best oh, character. Every time she's on screen, she annoys me. Mm. When she was doing, there was a scene that she was walking through the uh, calf, Kathy's, not Kathy's anymore, but Kathy's calf. Mm. And um, when she's holding a plate with her, and you can just see her like looking at the camera, like <laughs> she's doing. It's like, oh, go away, Kerry, leave me alone. That's All respect to the actress, because obviously we know that's very horrible what's happened to the actors in real life of course but the character of Kerry just ain't it no um, who else did we have we had all the Slaters arrive yeah who was Charlie Big Mo Lynn Katz Little Mo Zoe and Gary and Gary, Gary's a pain yeah. as well isn't he? but um, all very good I like well apart from Gary I don't like Gary but they're all good <laughs> even Lynn who I remember being mm. like, everyone moaning about Lynn being like the boring one like at the beginning she was quite she was like the main sister I feel she yeah. was like the level headed and she was quite strong she's quite feisty stand up to Janine stand up to and Ian and Phil and look at Mo as well look how Mo is Big being Mo. introduced Big Mo is being introduced like a completely mm. different character to what she became yeah it was really completely clever how they interwined her and Pat's history mm. like just so the Slaters had a sort of connection and um, they hated each other yeah <laughs> big time I mean it's such a big <laughs> risk to bring in this and like such what eight characters mm. all at once such a risk to, to do that as a producer if you think about it because not only that you're then introducing what Lynn and Gary's story yeah the Mo and Little Trevor Mo one, story the Zoe and Cat, Cat story yeah, yeah that's three big stories that he'd obviously had planned and I mean let's be honest the way that they've been uh, paced has been I, I'm, I'm sorry chef's kiss mm. perfectly paced yeah because we obviously know the outcome of all the storylines there's mm. so many little hints mm -hmm. like placed in the dialogue or or like they'll have a group of all them in the living room and someone will say something but if you look at Jesse Wallace she reacts but this, you wouldn't notice it if you didn't know mm. so yeah there's lots of clever stuff like that mm. but um, yeah I love Pat and, Fra um, Pat and Frank Pat and Moe's like rival yeah. where they walk to meet each other and Gary plays that gangster <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> really, really it's so funny. Um, and yeah, they, they were just calling each other tarts and slappers and prostitutes yep. and washed up and all Slappers. sorts. And um, yeah, because when like something common was happening with Big Mo with over with Cat's boyfriend, wasn't it? And Pat stood there and watched, all proud. And then mm. Mo was there when the the affair got revealed, and Mo was like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, you talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Nothing changes, does it, Pat? Pat <laughs> Evans. She keeps not Evans. She keeps using her maiden name, doesn't she? Wix. Wix. Wix yeah. yeah, she keeps going Pat. Um, yeah, no, no Harris. Pat Harris. Harris. The, 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 I mean, I love. I, mm. I, I must say, the Slaters were just a genius stroke, and mm. and they interview what the Zoe's in with like Jamie and Robin. Mm -hmm. like, all of that is really yeah, all very well. But done. they just worked very well, and. It, it, I mean, just the way they kind of integrated into the plot stories is just just good, just mm. so so good. And the little Mo and the Trevor story, I didn't realise the family knew so early on. They practically knew from the day they arrived on the yeah, square. Yeah, when we meet Trevor, we already know, don't mm. we? And they're they're kind of desperately trying to. Mm. I don't know. It's it's really weird because they I say they're desperately trying to stop her being with him, but they're kind of like. Well, she's chosen him. There's not much we can do. And they've tried to... But they... <laughs> it's, it's odd, isn't it? It's, mm. it's a, I guess that shows that Charlie, as the dad, is a bit... Like, he's a bit lax, isn't he? Obviously, the stuff with Cat, which we find out about, like, yeah. he kind of... He knew, but never really... He, he likes to brush things over Charlie I think and not have to he wants an easy life yeah he, he doesn't want to delve deep into the problems of yeah. his, his daughters mm -hmm. and all of them have problems because Gary is just cheating all the time With, uh, yeah Lynn and mm. yeah and he, and he knows that mm. and every time he gets an explanation from Gary he kind of just accepts it yeah so he's not really uh, he's like a quite he's like a kind calm loving dad I guess mm. but he's not f anything deep or emotional he doesn't like to seem to um he likes to take a step back yeah, and touch it and just let it happen mm, i guess it's, bit, it's yeah. odd which is why all of them are so messed up well, so thanks just, charlie thanks charlie yeah you messed up your own doors <laughs> uh, who else did we we came across audrey and anthony truman as well this year just towards the end mm, who opened the b&b &B, didn't she yeah. audrey <laughs> I don't like Audrey. No, it's so funny that the Trumans come from Audrey was the first one, and she's literally like the worst, the one. worst. Yeah, and we know that thing. the good ones are coming, like Paul mm. and Patrick. Yeah, it's so funny, isn't mm. it? And then obviously Nick 
Cotton returned. Yes, with his son, Ashley, mm. who we had a small introduction and of. And we had a spin off of um, the return of Nick Cotton as well on yeah. BBC Two, wherever it was on. I don't yeah, know yeah, it was yeah. on. It wasn't aired on Drama Channel in the UK, no. but we were lucky enough that we were mm. given a copy to watch. Yes. And uh, it is brilliant. And Charlie Slater gives him some advice. Not Charlie Slater. Charlie. What are you going on about? Charlie, Charlie Cotton. Slater. Charlie Cotton. <laughs> God, Charlie Cotton appears in a drug vision and mm-hmm. sort of tells him to go back at home mm. to Ma. Um, and he comes back with Ashley with like a plan to sort of rinse dot for everything and well she was given money from Ethel so mm. she really wants the money that she inherited and he's sort of tutoring Ashley isn't he into being yeah but Ashley's a bad not, son yeah he doesn't quite have the same mm. uh, he just wears his vests on Christmas his short sleeve tops I have you know <laughs> yes and his very his very long eyelashes he's very he's, he's fit in in 90s G.A.Y. I think club wouldn't he Ashley. certainly would certainly would nothing to, nothing to, mm. to, to accuse the actor or the uh, no, character no I'm just being. accusing his vest his <laughs> yeah. vest is is just so 90s queer as folk basically yes, costume basically um, um, so yeah they were just doing all sorts of silly things and then towards the end of right on was it New Year's Eve where Mark pushes him off the bridge or the episode before wasn't it it was like the last episode of the year where, yes, um, it was New Year's because Eve. Because he's got Martin on drugs. He got Martin uh, high on drugs on no but didn't he get Martin high on drugs on New Year's Eve I can't remember it was I think it was New Year's there, Eve because yeah. it was the New Year's Eve party because mm. uh, it's interesting because and it's, this is the first time I've ever seen them actually bother to sort of look into Nick as an actual character. You're right. Like, normally he's just this stupid villain and he's not... Mm. He's only given, like, a month or so and then he's carted off. But I feel his acting's gotten better. Oh, no, I was about to say the exact really same thing. Because he's been given more time. I yeah. feel like the, he's he's gotten better at acting, um, Nick Cotton. And it's interesting how he's given Martin drugs... Um, but he just he didn't want Ashley to have drugs. She knows what they can do to yeah, you. Yeah, because that's his son. Yeah, it's, it's funny like, that. Oh, that's like the first sort of human part of mm. Nick. I feel mm. where he's he doesn't want his son to maybe quite go down the same path as him. As well, he never got drugs. that father son bond from his dad, didn't he? Mm. Did he? So it, it, it's 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 quite. It, it's quite nice to see it between him and he, Ashley. Mm. Um, that's I, interesting. Yeah. That they actually bothered to give him some character. Um, development, which is very rare for Nick Cotton. It is, but as you say, it gave the actor a, a bit of time mm. to kind of develop himself a little bit more. So that was nice to see. Much better. All right, so that, I think that's pretty much. We, oh, Jackie Owen had the weird storyline with Gianni, <laughs> which didn't Jackie really go so much. <laughs> like they just changed Jackie overnight into yeah. like she hit Gianni randomly, yeah. and she was like, "It's because I have periods." And it's like, what? <laughs> it wasn't that. It was. It, it was. It, it was written period. really badly, though. It, the it, way that it was done. Like, that's literally what she said. I think they were. I think they were kind of PM, inclining. She said it's PMT and no, I need medication. I, I think it was. It was to do with her. Her. Period. Don't say that. We're gonna have loads that's of women getting in touch with us saying, "How dare you say women get PMT?" Yeah, but that's what she said, but and that's how badly it was written. I think it was inclined that it might have been a bipolar. No, it wasn't. I, th- I think it was. No, it wasn't. Sadly, it was just a really sadly. bad storyline. It wasn't well done at all. But she did she beat, up Jack, had... um, beat up um, Giovanni damn well. Yeah, frying pans, mugs, mugs. <laughs> Well, she's just throwing out as well, didn't she? Didn't she burn him with something when they were cooking or something? Or she was chopping veg really violently? <laughs> I mean, when she entered a room, the room lit up for me. She Bless was her. great. I loved Jackie so much. Mm. And I would happily introduce Jackie back to the show. No, she doesn't need to come back. Yes, yeah, she does. She's great. <laughs> and the Christmas was just an ensemble Christmas, wasn't it? But the main thing was the Phil and Mel sleeping with each other. Because he'd been increasingly horrible to Lisa, who was getting drunk at any opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah Lisa good. Was... She's good at playing drunk, old, um, whatever her name is, can't remember her name now. Lucy Benjamin. Mm. She's because she's been around Steve McFadden, he mm. plays drunk extraordinarily well. His yeah. Phil Mitchell drunk is spot on. I mean, that's why you just I like Lisa's drunk, drunk all the time. so funny. Mm. She looks, she's really good when she's like cooking over a hot stove and like drinking. She looks so funny. It's because it's she, she was like, she would make so many bad mistakes when she was drunk, Lisa. <laughs> yes. And, um... Like, she, she burnt the letter that Cathy sent oh, him or whatever, didn't I mean, she? she's jealous of Cathy. She still, still yeah. thinks that Cathy is Phil's mm. love. But the funny thing is, is that we know that it's not Cathy he loves, it's Ben. Mm. Which, again, is really kind of stark to see now in today's modern EastEnders, <laughs> where he just doesn't seem to care that much. I mean, he does, of course, it's his son. Mm. But, like, to the point, that, like, he is... Yeah, oh, Lisa's very jealous, though. But Lisa's very jealous of that relationship between them. And on Christmas, so we we're going to mention Christmas, Peggy came back and wanted to kind of... a new wig. <laughs> new wig. And wanted to, and wanted to kind of... Um, <laughs> 
kind of show a, a union back oh, to yeah, she wanted the all the rituals, didn't she? And Sam was the first one to pull out because she was in Spain or yeah, doing yeah. something in London, wasn't she? Diana Westbrook. And, <laughs> uh, and then, but then, then one by one, they all left because mm-hmm. then uh, Lisa and Mel had that argument and Lisa threw the wine on Mel. Mel yes. then went to Phil's to have a shower. Yeah. They slept together. And then... The stuff was going on with Jamie and Sonia because she's pregnant. Surprise pregnancy she had. This. Yeah. Yes, of course, of course. She had the surprise because she slept with Martin ages ago. She confided mm. in Natalie. Again, so well hidden on um, the show. And she said, oh, I've come to my period, so that's... Uh, it's all fine that she's like yeah that's great yeah. and then obviously <laughs> she was having she was getting back with Jamie wasn't she and they were mm-hmm. gonna was that the night they were, she was planning to sleep with him for the first time they wasn't were. it they were gonna have and sexy then she times. kept having pain so she sort of sent him away and she locked herself in the bathroom and he just disappeared and he, well, he thought it was an excuse for yeah her she was like him. fine I'll go <laughs> um, and then Big Mo came to help um, deliver Bex I love Chloe. that scene so much well, and Bex when it gets Bex isn't it no, but hang on Chloe Oh yeah, she could, so she calls her Chloe, later, yeah. but then she, when she's adopted, she becomes Bex. And and there's also the beginning. Pauline finds out that Martin is the father. That's and this until is, next year. Oh, isn't it? I thought no, that was the end no, of last no. year. This year, whatever. No, because Martin doesn't admit it for ages because he kept calling Sonia a slug. Uh, yeah, we've had it. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's where Jamie was on Christmas. So all the Mitchells disappeared. But Martin, yeah. So then he didn't turn up <clears> either. <throat> Poor Sonia, she had a hard year, didn't she? But then Jim, she had Jim the whole time, and Jim's a lovely ray of light on the show. And to see mm. the, the the relationship between Jim and Dot grow is so. It just feels so natural between them. Mm. It's so good. Yeah, so he's good. settled in very well. So. Mm. Um, Yes, that's the year of 2000. So lots going on, Gosh, changes like... and switches and yeah. all sorts. My goodness, I'm just having a quick look to see. But no, I think you're right. I'm trying to see if I... all this stuff we've missed. They tried to make their own beer. Oh, Charlie, Charlie, that was Charlie and Jim. The Big Mo's Knickers was the secret ingredient. It was. That she, <laughs> she had the distinctive taste that needed for that mm. ale. So, and, um, uh, yeah. yeah, that was the highlight of the year. That was for me. It was for me. <laughs> um... But yeah, there you go. So we need to give our reviews, our scores, our grades for the year. Mm. And last year we did, I think it was A minus and A plus. Yours was A minus. Because I always want better. I'm always looking for excellence. Um, so, and I have to say, this year... Is it better or worse though? Well, I mean, it was better, but then Jackie left. And so this dipped it down to an A. No, and Rosa. And, and Rosa. I did like Rosa. <laughs> Something horrible. I loved Rosa. Um, and Nina. Yes, uh, I, I has to say, story wise, and 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 the and everything, A was an A. Let's be honest, it was, it was an yeah, A. I'd it go with a, a solid A. Mm, yeah, it was a top there class was, year. The second half of it was real good, which yes. was, I guess, was John York was done cleaning up, and then he was allowed to do his thing. So, but it's funny because you kind of, did, although there was that handover, you didn't kind of know. It's not as noticeable of a handover yet mm. until then. You get to the end of the year, and you and you and you do see then you. You feel like this is John Sen. Yeah, this suddenly era. feels like a different mm. show. John Sen, God, John York's era. John <laughs> York. Can you imagine that? Uh, John York's era, um, mm. and and so you can understand why then he became caretaker mm. later on. Even differences like Pauline's living room looks very bright, too bright. It looks like it doesn't look like a grotty house. And you know no. what I mean? It's like little stuff like that where it's slowly changing, and the Vic isn't like smoky and no. full up and stuff. Mm. So there's just those little things. Where you, you used to get that in the classic episode. But it still feels like it still feels like a community, ensemble, it still yeah. feels like an ensemble piece. Um, which it, it, I think I think and I think it's, it keeps that in two, I think two thousand I remember two thousand being a really strong it was a, like a yeah. renaissance for EastEnders. Mm. Although the nineties were popular, I think two thousand. I think not just EastEnders though, I think soap suddenly had a big resurgence in mm. two thousand. And again it, 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 they kind <coughs> of should Dean. Of course. And it, it, I think a lot of young people kind of were injected into the show. I think young people started watching it again. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I think this is something that they, they're slowly lacking in the current day, but that's for another argument. But, I mean, mm. yeah, solid A. 100% solid A. A strong year next year to look forward to. I mean, I've seen I've seen the clips yes. and I'm excited. Sharon's back. I, I mean, With what? Her <laughs> You're obsessed. Hair straighteners have been invented <laughs> since. Down to her knees, those <laughs> hair straighteners. And we so, know she's all legs and no body, so you can see that's going to be 
very, very long hair. Yes. But obviously, we need to ask people who are watching or listening this on mm-hmm. YouTube, on Spotify, on uh, Apple Podcasts to get in touch with us. You can leave a comment below if you are watching us on YouTube or if you're listening to us. You can find us on Twitter at Wolford Weekly. Let us know your grade and any moments that you loved about 2000. Yeah, any that we've missed, because I'm sure there's loads. Sure. Um, let us know. In the, and yeah, let, put your score below in the comments. Or tweet us your grade for the year. And we will see you in a few months for the review of 2001. Exciting. We'll be on the London Eye. Oh, is that the year? <laughs> oh, I'm very excited. <laughs> right. Goodbye. 